Hey guys, so uh, yeah, the first betas of some of the Ubuntu distributions are out and today I'm going to be taking a little bit of a casual look at beta 1 of Ubuntu Mate, uh, what is going to be 18.04. So basically what happens is that there is a load of stuff that gets, you know, worked on behind the scenes. Then there is something called a feature freeze and then I think the betas are brought out. I think it happens in that order. So what we're going to see today is what they hope the final product will look like, but we can expect a few bugs here um, and, and, and maybe a few tweaks to change. And there are, of course, exceptions to these kind of feature freezes. But for the most part, uh, this is what we should vaguely be looking at uh, when it comes to a final release um, when in April. Now, that being said, I will probably be coming back and having a look at this, this distribution because Ubuntu Mate is a distribution that I hold in a very high regard. And the reason I hold it in such a high regard is because it has always done what I've wanted. And um, I can, I've installed it on a number of friends and family's laptops with zero errors. And well, I mean, the only errors being obvious user errors. Um, yeah, I think I had to install Skype for someone. I think that's really sort of the ballpark that we're talking about now. Of course, with snaps, that's going to be getting even easier. Uh, so, uh, yeah, today I thought we might take a bit of a casual look at it. I may uh, sort of meander a little bit. I may ramble a little bit. This isn't going to be a concise feature list. Um, because I use Ubuntu Mate, I'm currently... The machine that I'm actually using right now is Ubuntu Mate 17.10, and I'm running a virtual machine with 18.04 on it. Uh, you don't really want to run betas on a production environment. Either. I think that's generally quite obvious advice these days. However, I must say, not with this distribution, but with previous beta 2s, I have installed on production machines. And, and, and general with general success. Don't tell anyone that. But, um, but um, yeah, sometimes, sometimes the betas can be pretty good. Anyway, uh, that uh, aside, uh, so it comes with the Ubuntu Mate uh, Boutique Welcome Startup screen, uh, which is quite famous. Uh, and I do believe, but I am not 100%. Oh, actually, we can check, I believe. So if we go to accessories and hang on, check, I'll find the terminal there. Okay, and we can do, I think it's snap list. There we go. So these are the snaps that actually come pre-installed with Ubuntu Mate. So the the core is just the core set of snaps. Pulse Mixer is uh, something that they uh, wanted for a specific reason. Um, the reason why Pulse Mixer in there, I believe, if memory serves correctly, is explained in quite uh, quite full detail on the most recent Ubuntu podcast, which is episode two um, of the latest season. Uh, so, uh, and then there's the Software Boutique. Yes, I thought the Software Boutique and, and Ubuntu Mate Welcome, they are snaps as well. Now, I'm not entirely sure why. Um, it seems like they would be perfectly functioning programs. Uh, however, maybe it was the case that because they are Ubuntu Mate specific, they needed to be in a separate repository and it's easier just to bundle them as snaps, which I guess makes a lot of sense there. Easier to maintain. Um, yeah. Maybe it's easier to update as well, so uh, they can add new features without actually having to worry about updating the uh, PPA and all that kind of stuff. Because that kind of... Um, yeah, I can see how that'd be a bit messy. I can see how snaps are actually a bit cleaner when it comes to adding in these little extra bits of software that aren't necessarily in the repository. Or things that, for one reason or another, might require um, you know, a different update process, perhaps. I'm not entirely sure. Anyway, this is pretty good. This lets people know sort of the basics. Um, but we go into the software boutique. Now, I don't believe I recognize too much in the way of changes for the software boutique. It's as good as always. Um, a lovely bit of kit. And it, I, it, it is the only... So package manager. What happens if I select package manager? That brings... Yeah, that brings up... So, okay, so... Um, in the last long-term support release of Ubuntu Mate, there was, I believe, Synaptic and Software Boutique, two different package managers. And I believe in the last few versions of Ubuntu Mate, uh, we have seen the Synaptic package manager drop off of that and the Software Boutique become the de facto app store, if you will. In terms of user-friendliness, this is a fantastic um, idea. Um, and um, and they do allow you to install more software here through software and Synaptic Package Manage uh, Ma Package Manager. Um, so there are options. So if you want, you know, if you want to install the Ubuntu, but the Ubuntu Software Center is pretty good as well. 
Um, but I think when it comes to when you when you're installing a software um, installation utility, you kind of want one. It's it's for some reason and you know it ir- not irritates me a little, but it's sort of like when distributions include two um, tools for the same job, it's always like it feels a little bit counterintuitive. It feels like you um, superfluous, and and uh, some distributions, uh, quite a lot of distributions actually, um, ship with two media players. For example, they'll often ship with um, one that's native for the desktop and VLC, um, and I think actually. Um, yeah, VLC is included here, and I think we do have ah. So v- VLC, I believe, yeah. So v- VLC here actually is the only media player, but I do believe that there are a fair number of distributions out there that do include VLC and like Total Media Player or something like that. And that's I don't know, like it just feels like you've got two tools for the same job without a proper distinction as to why one isn't, you know, why why they're both included. Uh, so I can see the same kind of overlap. For for different package managers, so so what's the difference between Synaptic Package Manager and Software Boutique? Well, the, the level of detail is obviously quite significant, but to the person you know um, immigrating from a different distribution or Windows, um, yeah, that might not necessarily be entirely obvious. So there we go, and also the command line for apt and snap super easy. So um, in the event of like really really new users who would really quite like the software boutique because it's user friendly and really really advanced users or well, not even really really advanced users but like more power users that are happy with the command line to to navigate all of those bases are immediately covered out of the box anyway it's only the middle ground where you might want something like synaptic package manager which is a GUI with a little bit more detail then um then you have to install that but it's it's like the install process is is, is you know a piece of cake so i actually think that's a pretty good um pretty good move but really when um i think there probably are a few tweaks here and there there always seems to be the you know the, the a few tweaks to the uh, the store here but um it seems like it's the design that we all know and love and uh, and that's pretty cool so um i won't uh, i won't well i won't labor on this too much many of you will probably have already uh guessed that i've labored on it enough so Anyway, nice little terminal there. What terminal does it come with? It comes with, yeah, the Mate terminal. Nice terminal there. Also, uh, since we've got here, Pluma. Uh, this is actually a really nice text editor. Uh, it does like basic code pretty well, and you can you can do um, you know all the context clues for HTML and stuff like that. Uh, tab width, you can use spaces, you can use tab numbers. Um, yeah, you can set a tab. Yeah, that's pretty cool. So. Um, there you go. And that's tab width 2, but it's in spaces. Yeah. That's pretty cool. So yeah, Pluma gives you a lot of... Um, it, it covers the basics, but it covers the basics really well. And um, yeah, it's in like every repository. So that's pretty good. Now, there is a uh, press release here, and it covers uh, what's changed since 17... That was really... That's a really like nice uh, summary there. Um uh, what the thing that I'm personally looking forward to when I read this was it's not the HD, uh, the the high DPI support now. I know that there are uh, that's probably one of the highest frequency complaints that I have actually heard when it comes to Mate is the uh, high DPI support. So that is it's nice that that's um, getting worked on and it's nice that Qt applications are pushed to the environment as well because a lot of distributions have have had issues with qt uh, ubuntu mate has actually been quite good on in this regard as well one of the reasons why I, I i like it as a distribution is that there is this design um very good design continuity but the thing that i am interested in is marco now supports dri3 and present if a uh, present if available so what basically this should give us a performance boost for games uh basically more specifically a frame rate boost which i like um i'm uh one of the issues with with linux and games um for some reason does seem to be frame rate it does seem to be some kind of uh uh, whenever you try and run something through Wine, I think you'd, I, I notice that there is a, a, a uh, reduced frame rate quite a lot, and it's not necessarily always inherently obvious as to what what is always causing it. Um, sometimes it's not necessarily you know like it's it's Wine, it's complicated, you know. But anyway, better performance, I love it. Um, 
especially considering this computer, the CPU is getting rather old, but the uh, GPU is uh, NVIDIA GeForce GTX 970. So the more work I can load onto the GPU, the longer it is before I have to replace the uh, the CPU, because if I have to replace the CPU, I have to replace the motherboard, um, which probably means I'll have to replace my DDR3 RAM. I assume we still use SATA, right? So I, I suppose all those components. And I think that the NVIDIA GTX 970, whatever card slot that uses now, which seems to be the same one that's been used for a long time, um, should carry across. So I don't know. Like I've, um, I've, I've sort of priced it up, and I'm sort of holding off upgrading for as long as possible, um, just so that I can, uh, you know, just so just so the savings account can grow and do, and and take, you know, deal with it a little bit easier, I guess. <laughs> so anyway, um, Marco now drags the quadrant. Uh, yeah, quadrant tiling. Um, that works. It's not something that I use a lot, but it is a useful thing when, for example, you are using a terminal and you're typing instructions uh, presumably from the arch wiki I guess I assume that's where everyone goes for the general Linux uh, instructions because that's quite a good tool and it works quite well across uh, you know with distributions other than arch um, so what have we got here uh, the dock applet I've got to say Oh, I'll cover the brisk menu a little bit more. Yeah, that was the brisk menu. So they've done something quite interesting with it here, and I'll give you an actual demonstration with that. Um, the dock applet, which this is new. This looks new there. It looks slightly different from the usual indicator applet. Um, okay. The Oh, yeah, there was a minimal install there. I haven't tried it. Uh, the install process was the same um, in all other ways, I believe. There, I don't think there was any of that, in, um, uh, what you call it, information feedback. Uh, being, there wasn't a window for that. So I'm assuming that's not being, that's either not implemented yet in the beta or it's not being implemented in Ubuntu Mate, which is uh, the, the new thing where... Um, Ubuntu wants to take a survey or to take a survey of all its users and how they set up their installation. Now, on the last Ubuntu podcast, I I, I think it was said that it was like a one-time sending all your data. So it wasn't like a continual um, feedback thing. It was like they send your installation setup and then that's the end of it. Which to me is a lot less um, imposing than if it than if it was a several time event or something like that. So um, I would probably be more inclined to actually submit that knowing that it was like, you know, from, from what I've heard about the opt-in information gathering process so far. I do worry that um, as much as you try and de-anonymize data, uh, I, I've seen a fair number, I'm not an expert on the process, but I've seen a fair number of people reverse anonymized data using like pattern recognition equations and stuff like that. So um, if they're taking very, very basic information, and I think the most specific information that they're taking is which country you're from. And I even think that one might be optional, but I'm not like, again, we have no idea what this is going to look like until we see it in action. Uh, there is not an Ubuntu beta one, so we can't see for that, see that right now. Um, but yeah, I think I think the uh, a lot of people are sort of um, very 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 concerned, and maybe they have uh, may, maybe the concerns are legitimate, maybe not. But I mean, we have literally no idea whatsoever until uh, until it happens, really. Because I think if you, it's not too bad if it's opt out, but it's like an honest opt out, like an obvious opt out. It's like if it asks you straight up front, if if the if the box, you know, if the box is checked or the bullet list is like you know then it's i then it's fine it's it's when you have to edit config files to opt out that is when we're going to have a uh, uh, a pro you know that's that's where the problem would be so it's it's really to me a lot of it is the question around ui and how and how easy it is going to be to uh, decide where your information goes I am inclined to say that they would probably be on the better end of this because they've made big cock-ups before in regards to the Amazon, uh, the, the integration, and a lot of people really, really, really did not like this, and I don't think... Uh, and they rolled it back, presumably as a result of the un, the widespread unpopularity. Because truth be told, even though I started streaming on Twitch lately, 
I don't have any more love for Amazon than I do for Google. In fact, to be honest, I probably think when it comes to the uh, ethics of operations, um, I, th I think Google are probably more ethical than Amazon. Uh, they give you more control of your data. Uh, they tell you what they keep on you. They do provide provisions to delete it. Um, obviously there is this element of trust um, and obviously they you know they willingly work with authorities at the earliest opportunity so you know you take all these things in, into account um, but when you when you line it up especially among the other data collection um, companies I think I think Google probably eke out a victory they have been prosecuted for anti-competition practices they they seem to be regularly prosecuted for anti-competition practices so 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 Google by no means get a complete pass in all of this but um but but when it comes to Amazon, um, so uh, but then with Google, it's a more of a systemic issue, isn't it? It's the monopoly. So anyway, complicated stuff aside, because that's not what this video is about, and I'm sure uh, we all have pretty complex opinions about that. Which um, I don't know. share them in the comment section below. Always interesting to hear. Okay, so let's get on to the star of the show, the Mate Tweak tool. So I did give you guys a little bit of a preview on this earlier on. Uh, and I've actually got, oh, actually, no, ooh, well, before we do, before we do the tweak tool, as you can see, it is a nice layout. It works quite nicely. Nice background, right? This is another thing. And in fact, I believe it was even covered in the press release here uh, that I probably skimmed over it. They've, um, there we go. Uh, yes, so they've revamped the backgrounds. And it's one of those things, very small, but um, I think it is a good indicator into um, how much uh, thought has gone into a distribution. It's the little things like this. Uh, so they've the, so the artwork is it seems completely changed when it comes to the Ubuntu logo wallpapers. Anyway, that looks really good. I like the um, the grey and green is very good for like displaying the icon. The icon pops out a little bit more, but I feel that it's very 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 brandy for like day-to-day -day use so maybe the the green would be quite good because the logo is is um it's, it doesn't pop as much something like that that's pretty good that i think that one looks familiar so that might be from uh from a previous release but these also these these images tree in the tree and green wheat field man is that's that just a glorious i think that's a painting um if you look looking at the grass and whatnot oh beautiful love the colors in it um, this is a nice new um, Ubuntu Mate logo uh, design. I have no idea where this is, but it's a lovely shot. I mean, I could be uh, near anywhere in the UK. Scotland, Ireland. Parts of it could be, could be a lot of places in Europe. It does look distinctly Europe, but that just to me is, is is because of the green. For some reason, that that is a European green. I don't know. Maybe uh, it could be uh, could be sort of a, a bias or something. Oh, some of these are absolutely yeah. So anyway, uh, good wallpapers. It's nice that um, that they're given some uh, some thought from time to time because. Um, yeah, it's just like, you know, if you it's it's the little things that really sort of to me reinforce the idea that a distribution is confidently put together and and Ubuntu Mate has always demonstrated that to me. I've always felt very comfortable in knowing that you know, like thought has gone into it. But you know, it, and not always necessarily every single decision needs to be completely agreed upon, but um the the there can still be um you know, it can still be appreciated that thought has gone behind said decision. So, now onto the star of the show. So, this is the Redmond layout. This is the one that looks most like Windows. Uh, Windows sort of XP, Windows 7. It's got the very Windows-esque Mint style menu. Now, this is the menu that seems to be most popular among people who uh, I install it on. I think largely because they do feel they feel comfortable, even though there's really not that much difference between um, many of the layouts um, in terms of difficulty. Like they're just they all of them are as intuitive as, as as each other. All of them are easy to get into. So um, I don't know why people gravitate very rather quite strongly to the Redmond layout, but but they do, and they really quite like this. They um, a, a few people I noticed have liked uh, customizing it. So I'm hoping can we we can customize the mint menu themes you can do some uh, applications search engines there 
there is a lot of customization you can do for this. Um, yes, the recent documents plugin. There we go. So uh, a lot of people I know like having access to their recent documents uh, just immediately in the menu there. And it also seems faster. It also seems faster. So um, Ubuntu Bionic Beaver Development Branch. Okay. So yeah, I, I like the Redmond layout. I, uh, this is the nothing to mount. And uh, yes, this is Heidel Windows, and it comes with Firefox and Thunderbird Mail. Interesting that they put Thunderbird Mail in the quick launch tray because it doesn't seem to be a particularly popular application these days. Maybe that is what the Ubuntu survey might uh, might reveal. So, Redmond. Now there is a. Hang on a minute. There is a little uh, issue when it comes to um, th this menu here, right? Sometimes when you select a new layout, uh, it really helps just to log out and log back in to make sure all of the stuff is, is you know, is, is, is unloaded and deloaded. Sometimes it can get a little bit sticky. I don't know if this is a beta one thing or whether or not it's just, you know, a lot of stuff changes around really quickly and sometimes it just helps to log out, log back in. Or uh, or if you're like me and have a solid state hard drive, just do a hard restart because it takes like seven seconds. Um, so, um, if we go with traditional, if we start with traditional, good old traditional here. Uh, so this is what it is installed as when it comes out of the box as, and uh, I like this as well. This is this is good old fashioned. This is the this is the first when I first used Linux as my main operating system. Fedora Core six, I think it was. Uh, this is what it lo looked very similar to this. Looked very and it was very comfortable just to dive into. Absolutely loved it. Bringing back the old school. Absolutely love it. Um, and this is this. Yeah, this is what I've got currently now, but I also like the uh, the Redmond because it uh, it makes good use. Uh, we can also do there is also Netbook. Netbook is a very efficient style. Um, I assume designed for netbooks, uh, and it comes with you got the basic menu there, and then you've got that. Uh, this Mate tweak, and then there are some quick launch. There's like a dock. There's some dock items up there. Um, not for me this one, but it's really just because, um, and there's the uh, about this computer, uh, really because, um, well, I'm not on a netbook, so um, so so it's not really there. Uh, sort of designed with 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 the, uh, desktop in mind, um, but yeah, no, I think I think when it, I think Redmond just uh, ekes it out in terms of of comfort, comfort and usability. But again, a lot of this is habit. A lot of this is just like I am used to Windowsy systems. Okay, so this one is called Contemporary. Uh, this is where I think a lot of the newest stuff uh, comes in. It's kind of Mac OS esque, but it's got the uh, the bar down there at the bottom. Uh, it has the Brisk menu. Brisk menu is nice and fast, um, and it's got a search bar. Also, if you click on, for example, the file manager here, you've got file, edit, view, go, bookmarks um, that all exist at the top. What happens if you, if you maximize it? You don't lose the title bar, which is okay. And of course, the uh, the uh, X buttons are on the uh, left-hand side there. So we've got contemporary there. And um, yeah, so it's quite, it looks very much, it's very much like traditional, very much like the traditional layout. But it is. Uh, it's got a few of the the newer uh, features. Now, Cupertino is the one that I believe is supposed to be most like Mac. As you can see, you got the dock down there at the bottom. Something which I'm not too fond of, although it doesn't take up too much screen real estate because you can just maximize down there, and uh, yeah, you're all good on that department. Uh, but again, you've got um, the file edit bookmarks, all that kind of stuff up there. However, the menu here, the brisk, and this is the brisk menu as said on that press release, um, that, um, oh, hang on a minute, it, it doesn't give you the big brisk menu. No, because that's on mutiny, that's why. Okay, sorry, my uh, brain stopped working there for a second, but yes. Um, Yes, this gives you just the standard brisk menu, and actually, so so I do quite like the brisk menu, and it gives you so it's very much like contemporary, except really the the dock is seems to be a uh, uh, 
one of the most notable uh, changes there. So mutiny, mutiny um, is uh, pretty neat actually. In fact, I'm going to leave mutiny to the end. Let's do pantheon. Now pantheon is the one that I believe is most like elementary OS, and this uh, does use, of course, the brisk menu. It uses places and system as well. Um, and you can enable the dock and all that. So you can actually you can actually turn off the dock. What happens if you if you just deselect the dock, you just don't have the dock. Okay. Uh, and you can enable the HUD and pull down terminal, all that kind of stuff as well. So yeah, uh, this is uh, seems to be similar to Cupertino. Um, if we do if we do Cupertino, do um, and I think with Cupertino. Now, if you maximize, what's the one if you maximize? Uh, if you maximize it, you... Okay, I think what I'm thinking of and where I'm sort of meandering off to is towards Unity. So anyway, we were taking a look at the Pantheon desktop. And again, looks very Mac OS in design. Uh, we've got these... Uh, got the dock down there. Uh, menu, yeah, brisk menu places. So, yeah, that's the uh, the layout. Kind of actually very, yeah, kind of quite similar to Cupertino. Okay, so we come to our final desktop of the evening. This is called Munity, uh, presumably because of Mate and Unity being uh, joined together. Uh, so the Unity desktop was Ubuntu's primary desktop for the vanilla Ubuntu desktop installation. Uh, for quite some years, up until the 17.10 release. The 17.10 release was the first uh, where they sort of uh, came back to the GNOME desktop. And uh, I think a lot of people did quite like to see Ubuntu come back to the GNOME desktop, if not for the the, the sort of the symbolic element of, it, of them sort of uh, becoming more integrated back into the wider Linux community. I think that's certainly how I felt about it. It was like, it felt that Ubuntu was becoming the Linux again in, in, in a certain way. Um, and I know that a lot of people didn't like to see the Unity, Unity uh, desktop go, and I might have had a bit more, um, I might have had a bit more enthusiasm for it if it was readily available across distributions. I think this is where Snaps have done so well, is that because they've, uh, be because the Snapcraft team have made the extra effort to go out and, um, and, and, uh, and, and introduce their snaps into other distributions proactively that snaps are a lot healthier than they would be than if they just you know invented the technology and then just sat on it um and and, and it's all well and good to say that that something is cross distribution um it's a different uh story to actually go out there and and make sure it's properly implemented but snaps are snaps are very easy to run cross um uh, cross distro, whereas Unity, I think, you know, if 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 it was easy to put, you know, if you if it was easy to put um, Unity onto other distributions, we might have seen it. But as I understand it, it was very very Ubuntu centric. Anyway, that nonsense aside, this is um, a, a sort of a, a, a an attempt to sort of recreate it, and it's not like for like, so they don't have the stylized buttons that they did on the left. Um, however. Uh, every time I come back to the um, Mutiny desktop, it does seem to be a little bit more and more like what Unity used to be. It has the brisk menu, which is customized to look like this big dashboard layout, which I really like. Really like a nice, fast, speedy desktop layout. Not with, with, with all these zooming in and out animations. I mean, bang, 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 you know... No nonsense. Search tab at the top there. So th you can see where they've just rearranged the brisk menu and they've they've added, uh, you know, like it's they've just sort of rearranged it, really. It's just as fast. It looks largely the same, but in, in, in a more, you know, dashboardy format. I love it. It's good. So the thing is with, with um, Mutiny, which was one of the things I was kind of looking for for some of the other... Uh, desktop environment layouts was that it swallows the title bar as you can see here. So when I've maximized it you can see that it makes absolute maximum use of vertical screen real estate. Right there. So that's it as an unmaximized. And that's like, so so it's like almost like it's embedded into a, almost like a full screen kind of um, way. So it does give you a lot more uh, screen real estate for um, 
you know, maybe low resolution monitors, maybe laptops, maybe netbooks. Maybe this might be a little bit better than netbook. I mean, the larger icons down the side might be more attractive to netbook users. The uh, the the free space at the top. Yeah, I like it. This gets this gets better. I'm not a fa you know, this isn't my natural layout. If if I were to pick a favorite, it would be Redmond because uh, it's just what I've grown used to over the years. I like traditional as well. I, I actually do use traditional uh, nowadays, but I sometimes mix it up just to uh, just for the hell of it. Anyway, I think that really is about the end of a rather meandering and rambly look at Ubuntu Mate Beta One. 1804. Uh, expectations have become rather high with Ubuntu Mate, um, but that's because expectations are regularly filled with Ubuntu Mate. The last distribution, which is the one that I use regularly for all my streams and what have you, has really just, it's not let me down at all. It hasn't. Zero complaints, really, and snaps just seem to be making this a better and better distribution. So... Uh, you know, I, I can speak highly of other distributions that attempt to do similar uh, things. Uh, I think that like Linux Mint, for example, and I use that on other machines, is, is very, very good. Uh, Linux Mint, of course, does use the LTS versions of Ubuntu. So if you want the latest software in a much more um, native format than the six monthly releases of um, of Ubuntu are probably going to be a better bet. I think Pop! OS might do that. And Pop! OS, actually, that's one that I should take a look at. Okay, so I think that's about it from me today. Uh, I think this has been a pretty meandering but somewhat um, in-depth look at Ubuntu Mate, at least from a UI standpoint. Uh, it, this stands as being one of my favourite all-time distributions and certainly a really good distribution uh, it's certainly behind it with its track record when I install it on friends and family's uh, laptops and, and desktop machines. Uh, often when they're trying to extend the lifespan of it, usually um, people will come to me when they don't really want to spend money replacing a computer, but they can tell that their operating system is getting a little bit ropey. And, and that's usually my, you know, usually when I introduce them to something like Ubuntu Mate. And um, it's usually the latest long-term support release that I introduce people into uh, because it's, you know, you install it, you set it up, you put the applications that they like on it, and then, um, you know, it's just a matter of, of, of making sure that the machine is, uh, is, is properly upgraded. It is a very intuitive distribution from top to bottom, and um, a lot of people... Uh, who are who I introduced to it have zero literally zero issues zero issues whatsoever. So the conundrum that I've got to face now is that to all the people that I who are happily running sixteen oh four, do I offer to upgrade them to eighteen oh four with some of these newer things, or do I just let them run it for another two years and see what it's like when the next LTS is down the road? Because uh, it's supported for as long, uh, I think. So, um, and, and a lot of the people who I do introduce Ubuntu Mate to, they're not computer people. They are non-techie people. They are regular old people. They don't care if they're running 1604 or if they're running 1804. So it's really... Um, so, so I suppose, you know, you could argue, well, if they're not looking to upgrade, then then you know, and everything's stable and working now, uh, why introduce a potential complication into the mix? Um, so I suppose I've got, but well, but then there, there is, um, you know, maybe a newer versions, newer versions of some of the software. But then again, things like browsers are, are, are properly updated. And also nowadays, of course, with snaps and even 1604 snap, uh, support snaps really quite well. So, um, hmm. I've got to think about that one, to be honest. There is no obvious call. Do I upgrade my friends and family who don't really care about computers to, to 1804? Or do I wait and just make a big project of it in another two years' time um, and then just make it a, you know like a four-year thing? Because if, if I'm not mistaken, Ubuntu Mate is supported for, for five years on an LTS, which is a really nice long time. Please correct me if I'm wrong on that down in the description below. But um, that, you know, and, and, and a distribution that you have to update it once every four years because you know you would you would skip an LTS. That's quite a that's a very low maintenance way to go and it, and it certainly has helped with a lot of people. So uh, and because yeah the security updates are um they, you know they keep happening so it's it's uh, not a problem from that standpoint. But uh, anyway, like I say, I'll give it some thought. Thank you guys very much for watching. Of course, let me know your thoughts down in the comments section below and um, 
yeah, until next time, uh, I've been Chris Ware and you've been awesome. Take care now.